Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Hey, I'm gonna share something with y'all now. I'm in my bed and uh, I'm, I'm working from the bed today. You know, just sent out an email and went to my academy and you know updated the price on one of the courses on Tony Gaskins Academy and sent out an email to the students who missed the 2021 course. And I'm working from bed from bed today and and I feel like working from bed. And uh, last night I was up, I was listening to an audio book and I was listening to some videos and stuff on investing and just where the market is doing and, you know, cryptocurrency and just learning different stuff. And I probably went to bed about 3 a.m. And then I had to get up at 8 because I had a guy coming to work on my AC. And uh, the last couple of days, you know, at the beginning of this year, I, I stay up late some nights and I study and just kind of relax and just be by myself in, in the in the quiet and the darkness. Everybody sleep. The world around me is quiet and, and I could hear clearly. And last night I was reminded of another idea that I've been having now for some time. And whenever the same idea hit me over and over, it just it let me know that God saying is listen, this is something I got for you, for you to do from your gifts that can, you know, help your brand, add brand equity or eventually add income to your family to support you in the work that you're doing. Because a lot of the work that I do, you know, it could be what what we call thankless. You know, you could you could give more out and do more for more people than you receive in return, you know? Um, just like YouTube will show you like, YouTube will show you, hey, this month you got X amount of million views, but you don't have X amount of million, you don't have that many million subscribers. You got this many million views, but only 40% of the people subscribe to your channel. So what I mean is a lot of times in, and then I'm doing purpose work. A lot of times in purpose work, you could give more than you receive. But when you're doing purpose work, you work for God. And so God going to make sure you're taken care of, you're taking care of your family and that you're blessed and that your barns are filled and running over. But it may come from several different areas, several different ways. And, but we don't lack for anything. So don't think I'm saying that. But my point is, is what I was going to tell you is a lot of people, when it comes to business, you have all these things that they say, hey, you know, this is what millionaires do. This is what the successful do. This is what, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to do this, guess what? You know, I became a millionaire and earned a great living at a young age, in my 30s, and I stay up to 3 o'clock in the morning, and I sleep to 10 a.m. I sleep to, to noon. Uh, I never wrote my goals. I prayed on them. I thought on them, but I never wrote my goals until 2020. And I looked at them probably three or four times uh, when I wrote my goals in 2020. I have not wrote and written any goals this year. And I looked at one of my businesses, and it's up 1,500% from 2020. And I haven't written any goals. Um, this year, I haven't done a workout yet. You know, I, I don't eat crazy or, you know, just stuff my face. But I haven't gone to the gym. I have a trainer, and I haven't gone to the gym yet. And it's, it's January. Um. 14th, I think. And and I live, you know, I, I earn money and I live. You know, my family, we going to the Miami Open for tennis. We going to the Super Bowl. You know, we going, we go to the NBA games. We go to the NFL games. You know, I own a luxury suite at the thing, at the NFL. And I buy the suites at the NBA and I say that to say, I live. You know, a lot of people talk about just saving, saving, saving. And, but look, tomorrow ain't promise. 
So tomorrow is not promised. So you so you sitting on all these millions of dollars and you could be gone tomorrow. When if you gone tomorrow, you got family that's gonna outlive you. What memories they gonna have of you? Just you saving every dime? Because you scared to live? Because you so focused on money? Because you so scared, you have such a scarcity mindset. I don't think about money because as long as I'm breathing, I'm gonna be earning. Because God done gave me a mind, He done gave me a gift. And then the gift that he's given me, when God give you a gift, use your gift. And when you use your gift, you use your gift in a way that if you can't do that anymore, you have already created businesses and set things in place that you need to be doing today. That if you do, something happen to you. Our neighbor, she told my wife, she said, hey, make sure y'all get disability insurance. You know, she said my husband had a stroke, but we had disability insurance and we set for life now. So I'm guessing their disability insurance was, you know, like in the millions. And they cashed in on it after he had his stroke. He doesn't work anymore. And they living fine. That's what she told us. Now, I don't need disability insurance for me personally uh, because of the way my businesses are. And because of what I do and because of the assets that I have. And I don't work for no job. And so, but my wife know how to run everything. She see how the several streams of income that we set in place and she know how they work and she knows just hit this button just hit that button just do this right here just set this up just do this and it's set to where you could eat in your sleep i never had a business mentor god gave me that god i never sat down with a business person who told me hey do this do this do this when i'm up late at night and that's when I'm talking to the Lord. Because see, in the daytime, my wife up, my kids up. They at school right now, but the world is moving. It's loud. It's horns blowing. It's trucks coming in and out. It's workers. So everything going on. So at night, when everybody's sleeping, that's when I sit and I hear from the Lord. That's when I feed my spirit. And then I may sleep in. And so a lot of people say, oh, you want to be a millionaire? Wake up at 4 a.m. You want to be a millionaire? Wake up at 5. Listen, I didn't do that. My point is the common denominator for, for real success, true success, success that comes without sorrow, success that comes without worry, success that comes without uh, lack, not success that is with depression. I see somebody say, hey, the more money I made, the more depressed I got. That's because you connected to the wrong source. You just making money, but the money don't have a purpose. You making money, but you ain't tapping to your purpose. You don't know God. You don't know your creator. A lot of people, especially men today, want to be bigger than God, want to be smarter than God because the male ego doesn't want to be in submission to anything else. The male ego wants a woman to submit to him but doesn't want to be into submission to anything bigger than him. The male ego, the male who is immortal, does not want to believe that he has to answer to anything or anybody. And that being is God, your creator. That's what I surrender to. That's what I've submitted to. And that's why I could sleep in the noon. That's why I could sleep in at 10 a.m. That's why I could go to bed. That's why I don't have to work out every day because my, my spirit buffeted, my spirit clean. I When you hear people 110 years old talk, they don't say I went to the gym three times a week. They say, what you did? They say, I was nice to people. They don't talk about no workout regimen. One man, I heard him say five things he eat, five different food groups he eat. But, you know, he just came up with something. I could tell he just he just knew he was going to be on the news and need to have something to say. That was a brother. But when they showed the, the, the older white ladies and the older black ladies, I was nice to people. I was I had a, you know, I just live. I had fun. And and that's what they say. And, and that's what I know. That's what I live. That's what I understand, you know. Uh, my grandma, she smoked She smoked like a chimney since she was 19, and she died at 82. 82, a long life. The Bible promised us three score and 10. That's 70 years. A score is 20 years. Three score and 10, and then more if you pray for grace. My grandma lived 82 years, and she was a heavy smoker, and I feel like she saw 82 because of her heart. And so I say this to say God is, is the X factor. God is the X factor. And for people who have pure success with peace and happiness, God is the common denominator. 
Because a lot of people who talk to you about being a millionaire and about making money and about being successful, they ain't really happy. They ain't really happy. And their pleasure comes from being able to sound important, to sound smart. And I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of people who tell you all this stuff to do don't even do it. A lot of people who tell you all this stuff to do don't even... A lot of you, get up at 4 a.m. I get up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m., they be... They can't even... They, they be dead to the world, 4 a.m. But you not in their house. So now, here you is getting up 4 a.m. You got a headache. You got a migraine. You about to wreck going to work because a quote-unquote millionaire, you ain't seen their bank account. You ain't seen their bank account. They could be just over broke. You ain't seen their bank account. So I'm here to just break this in and just let y'all know, like, listen, I can't argue with results. Because I know some people, oh, Tony, you're supposed to go to the gym. You shouldn't be telling people not. Did I tell anybody not to go to the gym? I did not tell anybody not to go. What I'm telling you is I have not gone to the gym. A lady just commented last night. She commented. She said, let me tell you what the lady said. She said, no offense to your wife, but you looking really good and younger. What are you doing? I just told y'all what I'm doing. Not going to the gym. I'm finna start back going to the gym next week. But I didn't go to the gym again this year because one of my close folks caught COVID, so I need to watch myself, monitor myself. I went and got tested. I tested negative. I felt fine, too. But when he tested positive for the situation, for that 19, I actually went to the hotel for about four or five nights. Y'all ain't even know that. Y'all ain't even know that. While I was shooting video, and then I come in my front door with my mask on, dip right in my office, sit in my office, shoot my video, leave, go back to the hotel. Got away from my family because my oldest is asthmatic. And but then I tested and I was negative. So I ain't have it. God covered me. The person who caught it sat right next to me a couple of days before he tested positive. Sat right next to me, talked to me without his mask on. I ain't have no my mask on. I ain't catch it. Before he caught it, my barber caught it. My barber sat right next to me a day before he tested positive. Talked to me, no mask on. We was at a game. We was at an NFL game. I took him. The other, my other partner that caught it, we was at an NBA game. I took him. And I I took and you know, I blessed the people around me and, you know, had them experience some things that God done afforded to me to be able to experience. Both of them sat right next to me and talked to me, and I ain't test positive. Neither time. And so I done had two of them tests now. And them test costs over here. Yeah, they got some free ones, but not the kind I do. And so now listen to me. God is the X factor. So a lot of people, they want to talk to you about success and they want to talk to you about all this stuff and they leave God out the equation. I'm man enough to know that God is real. I'm man enough to know that we up under something and, we call, and I call him God. I'm man enough to know that I'm not the highest power, that I got to be in submission to a higher power. I'm man enough to know Jesus Christ was real, is real, walked the earth, was crucified, and rose again. I'm man enough to know it. And I'm man enough to tell you that there's no definition of success. There's no one type of success. There's no one way to success. I was talking to uh, one of my coaches who took the coach certification, and she signed up for coaching with me. And... She did a VIP session, which is twice the price of a normal session. And she said on there, she said, Tony, she said, Tony, I'm glad you said that you don't like routine, that you don't like doing stuff that routine, because I see all these people and they do these calls, you know, that's in the morning, every morning or whatever. And that you say you don't like routine. And that's the truth. I don't like routine. That's why I really don't like doing mastermind groups and stuff like that, because I don't want to have to answer to nobody but God. I don't want to have to show up every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Because Wednesday night, I might be at my son's game. I might be at an NBA game. I might want to watch a movie with my wife. I don't want to have to show up 
at no Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Every, for seven weeks in a row. So I did the seven days to start this year, and I never really do stuff like that because my life is spontaneous and I live to the fullest because I know tomorrow is not promised. So I live to the fullest, and I don't wait to live, and I don't wait to love, and I don't worship money. I do not worship money. So if I make money, I'm going to spend money because money is not my God. And yes, I save a little bit, but if I need to spend that savings, I'm going to spend that savings because that's what a savings is for, to be spent. And if a God has given me a brain and he has given me the ability to get up and work, then I'm going to work. And I'm going to work every day to eat that day and pray that God bless my hands and bless my work, that he multiplies my work so that I don't have to be so stressed out and so money scared. And I see people with such a scarcity mindset and I see people that, you know, talk about and, and brag about the $2 shirt they wear. I will wear a $2,000 shirt if I can afford it because that linen going to be finer. It's going to last me longer and it's going to look better. Point blank period. I'm not finna take pride in being broke. I'm not finna take pride in, in having a scarcity mindset. I'm not finna take pride looking like who shot John and forgot to kill him. Looking broke, busted, and disgusted, tore up from the floor up like the man on the moon. I'm not finna take pride in that. And we live in a world that people want to be patted on the back for waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning. That people want to be patted on the back for doing a call at 6 a.m. every morning. That people want to be patted on the back for eating kale all day. People want to be patted on the back because they work out six times a week. Listen, it's a lot of people do all of that and still be miserable. Still be lonely in their spirit. And it's a difference between being alone and being lonely. It's a lot of people do all that. And you know how I know? Because I'm out here. Because I'm out here. Because I done went from nobody knowing my name to millions of people knowing my name. So on that ascension, that allowed me to meet a lot of people. That allowed me to sit by a lot of people that you call important, that you think is important. It allowed me to be in some circles, to go from earning $20,000 a year to earning seven figures. It allowed me to learn a lot, to see a lot. And what I'm telling you, I ain't seen nobody that I envy their lifestyle. I ain't seen nobody. You know why? Because when you know God, you don't envy. Because when you know God, you got it all. When you know God, you, you peaceful in and out of season. When you know God, you peaceful when your bank account in the negative. When you know God, you peaceful when your bank account is overflowing. When you know God. And and I look and I see, and I and I, I was just looking and I <laughs> I look and I and I see little stuff online, and I see like I was just seeing they were showing a rapper, and he he buy he, he buy his friends chains, and he's talking about how generous he is, and and I look and I say look what God doing on this side of things, and it ain't on nobody blog, look what God doing. What I, what I experienced in 2020, and it ain't on nobody blog. Like, when I bought my mama a car, my daddy a car, my sister a car, my mother-in-law a car, and two of my homeboys a car. I think that's five or six people and my wife a car. In the same year, God did it. And it ain't on nobody blog. It ain't on nobody blog. But see... That's what I'm telling you. God will give you peace and blessings that are unspoken of. God will give you peace and blessings that you so peaceful, you don't have to flex online. You don't have to post a screenshot of your bank account or the money that you're making. You don't have to do that because God will give you peace. And what I want you to understand is that my success may not look like your success. Your success may not look like my success. In your season, in your success, you might stay up for 48 hours straight 
and then sleep pretty much for the next three days. And in that 48 hours that you stay up, if, if, if God kept you up 48 hours and, and your spirit was being poured into, guess what? Think about this now. In the Bible, they went to the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights. How would somebody look at you if you went camping and you went camping for 40 days and 40 nights? They'll look at you like you crazy. But see, let me help you understand something. God don't speak to everybody the same. And everybody's success ain't going to look the same. And everybody's personality ain't going to be the same. So the way I make a million dollars might not look like how you make a million dollars. And it may take me 10 years to make a million dollars. You may make a million dollars in a day. You hear me? You See, your success, everybody have these blueprints for success and everybody be so ready and willing to share their blueprint for success and that's why i keep thinking i'll be like man hmm i want to do a real mastermind group that's like for a year that's like seventy five hundred dollars a person that's i could really pour into people but then it hit me and i say tony you can't charge all that money because it ain't that much of you you know what you do is mostly God. So teach what you could teach. Teach your systems. Teach what you've learned. But charge the price that it's, it's worth. That's why I see guys out here and they charging $2,500, $3,500 for their courses. And I'm like, how you doing this to your own people? You say you want to help. But if you want to help, why you charging $2,500, $3,500? When you're not that smart, you're not that smart, you're not that smart, you're not that special, you got you got lucky. See, now, I ain't get lucky because I believe in God. Now, if they believe in God, they ain't get lucky. You got blessed. So, this is the thing. The reason why you don't see any of my courses at this very moment over $1,000. Now, yes, it's going to be eventually over 1000 like my Life Coach certification. But the only reason why that will cross 1000 when it does it's because it's a return on investment. It's just like your college degree costs you $40,000, $50,000. It's because you're going to work with that degree and you're going to earn money from that degree. So you're paying for it. Life Coach certification, you're going to go earn hundreds or thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in your life coaching, what you implement from that course. So eventually that'll cross a thousand. Right now it's only $500. It's other people taking the course just like mine, and they paying, one of my clients, she paying $12,000 for her life coach certification course. Because some people think that the more you pay, the more it's worth. That's not true in our world. Look at our world. We live in a world of liars. We live in a world of crooks. We live in a world of smoke and mirrors. Just because you pay more for a course, a intangible Something that's intangible. It don't cost materials for the course. Don't mean that it's better. It's different when I say you paying more for a material. And, and I could attest to this because I have clothes from Walmart. And I have clothes from Target. And I have clothes from Louis Vuitton. And I have clothes from Fendi. And I have clothes from Dior. When it comes to shoes, you paying for the brand. Because a pair of Dior's cost a thousand dollars, and they do not feel better than a pair of Nikes that cost a hundred. When it comes to clothes, that's totally different because that's material. So your my, my wife bag from Michael Kors don't last half as long as a bag from Louis Vuitton or Chanel. The material is totally different. So it's different when you paying for something tangible. But see, we live in a world of crooks. We live in a world of internet marketers. So this is the thing. A lot of people say, hey, do marketing, do marketing. Guess what? I don't do marketing. I done tried it, but it's just not my thing. When I say marketing, I mean like Facebook ads. Facebook ads, Instagram ads. You know, I done tried it, but it's just not my thing. And you know why it's not my thing? Because I don't want to sell you on nothing I'm doing. I don't want to sell you. 
I don't want to bait you. I don't want to lure you. I want you to bump into me organically, see my heart, see how I work, see how I move, see how I think. And then if you want my course, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm not going to overcharge you for it. And you know why I don't sit... People say, man, Tony, your stuff too cheap. Your stuff too cheap. And that's because they're comparing it to the market. They're comparing it to other people. But what you have to realize, not everybody is called by God. By God, Not everybody doing God's work. So not everybody fears God or have to answer to God. I got to answer to God. So I got to make sure that the price I charge for my course is the absolute least that I feel I could charge in that moment, in this season, in this market, and for the value that's in the course. It have to be the lowest price because I got to answer to God. If if my if I operate from a spirit of greed, I'm gonna suffer because of the, the code that I live by. Being a Christian, a real Christian, not just of the letter, but living it, um, not just saying it, but living it. And so, I have a conviction on how I price stuff. I also have a conviction on how I market stuff. And so I trust God. Now listen. That does not that did not stop me from earning seven figures in my work. That didn't stop me from that. A lot of people think, oh, you're gonna be broke. You charging, you charging prices so cheap. No, because I work with a higher power. And that's real. And I know that it's real. I can attest to it. I don't believe in fairy tales. I did time in the streets. I served in the streets. You hear me? I, I know what's real. I I had gun in my lap. I sat in my college classroom with a quarter pound of weed and a 380 in my in my book bag with instead of pen and paper. So I know what's real. I, I know when you about to lose your life. I know what it's like for a man to take another man's life. I done been around that. I done seen that. I don't believe in fairy tales. So when I say the name of God, I'm not talking about a fairy tale. Like so many people today want to believe. No. Uh-uh, you better try it. Don't knock it till you try it like they tell you. So I know God. But see, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that you cannot just get into no system and buy into one system and one route to success. If it's draining you, stressing you, causing you to worry, upsetting you, frustrating you, you have to do what makes sense to you. You have to do what makes sense to you. Just like I'm sitting here talking to you right now. I got my phone on portrait mode instead of landscape. Why? Because I don't feel like holding it on landscape. So I'm going to do it on portrait. I'm talking to you with no lighting right now. I'm sitting in my room with no lights on. A lot of people, when they get on YouTube, they got to have their makeup on. They got to have all their lights set up. They got to have their camera set up. It got to go into the editor. It got to get edited. It got to have, then they got to do a custom thumbnail. They got to write a description that's longer than a book. They got to have a hundred keyword tags. Listen, I don't do none of that. And guess what? It has not stopped me from being successful and from doing the work that God has called me to do. My point to you is, is I could teach you my systems. I could teach you my systems. One thing I can't teach, one thing I can't sell to you or teach you is God's favor. So you have to get in line. But the other thing is God don't pick favorites. The Bible says God has no respect of persons, meaning he don't pick favorites. Anybody could get, anybody could get blessed. But that's on you and your relationship. That's where your heart at. And you don't get blessed by your works. You get blessed by the positioning of your heart. You got to be open to receive. You got to be ready to receive. You got to be willing to receive. But God don't pour blessings on mess. He don't bless a trashy heart, a greedy heart, a jealous heart, an envious heart, a bitter heart. He don't bless people who choose to be negative and bitter and condescending and rude and nasty and backbiting and gossiping. God can't bless that because that would make God a lie. God going to bless a heart that is seeking righteousness and purity. Not saying he's blessing a perfect heart, but a heart in pursuit 
of perfection, as Jesus tells us to be perfect, as my Father in heaven is perfect. So understand this. Your life and your success does not have to fit inside of any author or speaker's narrative of success. And just because that's what they do does not mean that's what you have to do. Just because, see, listen, I stay up late and I work some nights. I don't do that all the time, all every season, but it's seasons where I'm up late. At the start of this year, I've been feeling like staying up late, getting downloads, and then sleeping in. So when that lady said that to me, you know, I didn't take offense to her. My wife don't take offense to her. I know some of y'all, oh, that lady shouldn't say that. That's disrespectful. She just was speaking her, you know, her truth for her heart. It, it, don't, it don't make me none. And she said, uh, no disrespect to your wife. It don't make me none. I don't see it like a Jezebel spirit or anything like that. It just, but what I said, I said, mm, ain't that something? Because I ain't did nothing. I ain't went to nobody gym. You hear me? I ain't went to nobody gym. Now, what I did do is I got a haircut. All right? And and I've been sleeping in. So, guess what? I stay up late. Man, I stay up to 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12. Then I get up. I move my coaching calls to where my first coaching call is 3 p.m. It used to be noon, but that was in the middle of my day, and it was throwing my day off. So if I sleep in at 10 or 11, 9, first thing I'm doing is getting on a call, serving somebody else, so I push it to 3. So I move my coaching call to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And then I moved it to only coaching Tuesday and Thursday. So my thought behind that is Monday, that's my day. It start the week, the work week, that's my day. I don't want to be coaching nobody. Tuesday, I can coach. Wednesday, that's another day to recalibrate, work on my week, work on my stuff I need to do. Thursday, I coach somebody. Friday, that's my day off. I'm an entrepreneur. My weekend start early. So Friday, my weekend already started. So I have a three-day weekend every, every week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I text. I respond to text 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I ain't talking to you before nine because that, that time is sacred to the Lord, okay? And my work, my family, 9 a.m. 7 p.m. because sometimes I'm working till five, you know, and then I'm at my son practice from six to 7.30, so I'm just sitting there, you know, and I'm either coaching or I'm on, doing nothing, you know, on the computer or something. And so I text till seven because a lot of people don't get off till five o'clock because a lot of people not entrepreneur so a lot of people they'll text me but after five o'clock when they off work so i move my time to 7 p.m but that's 9 a.m to 7 p.m texting but that's only monday through thursday 5 p.m my weekend start early so 5 p.m friday you can't reach me after that saturday you can't reach me on text sunday you can't reach me on text only way you can reach me on text is if i'm i'm alone I'm by myself. I'm not with my family. That time is reserved for my family. And even on, on them days, I may work for an hour, like shoot a, if I need to shoot a video or something. But the other 23 hours is for my family, you know, the other than when we sleeping. And so I say that to say, that's the system that works for me. That's my system. And my body is different. You know, a lot. your body, that's what my wife was telling me too. Because, like, I did vegan for two weeks, and I think I lost 10 pounds. And I did keto before for two weeks. Uh, I lost 10 pounds. and But my body is different to where when I wake up, I really don't get hungry. And sometimes I could eat one meal a day, and I'll be fine. And I don't have no ailments or anything like that. It just that's how I'm built. My wife... She as soon as she wake up, she gotta eat. Thirty minutes, thirty minutes after being up, she gotta eat something. A little blueberry muffin, a little yogurt, something, something. She gotta eat. And with her, you know, she studied the body. She's a, a medical student. She got a master's in medical sciences, a bachelor's in biomedical science. So she studied the body and the functions of the body. And guess what? She believe in balance. She she don't really do, eat pork like that but every now and then she'll have a pepperoni pizza um she eat meat 
she she eat you know snacks you know she she believe in balance you know body get a little bit of everything a little bit of this kind of iron a little bit of this protein a little bit of this here sugar a little bit of fun a little bit of discipline you know last night she made roasted vegetables I'm like who just sit and crunch on vegetables but that's how she eat sometimes you know, onions bell peppers and all of this with sweet potato in there. I can't eat like that. You know, that that's not tasty to me. But that's how she is. You see what I mean? And so me, every now and then, I got to dip in and have me a, a Popeye's chicken. I can't I can't handle it now. I can't eat it like that like I used to. But once a month, I got to I got to go touch me old Popeye's chicken now. But see, that's me. Some people they never eat fried food. I have people say they ain't drunk a soda. In years, oh, I'm finna, oh, I'm finna get me a little fizz. I'm finna get me a little carbonation. I'm finna hit me old soda, old Arnold Palmer. But listen, I believe in living. Now I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed. I don't get drunk. But you know, I'ma have my old Arnold Palmer every now and then from Chick Fil A. And so here's the thing: somebody, when somebody knew that was, I was a life coach, I went to somebody's house one time. They knew I was a life coach. They tried to feed me some kale and spinach, and they had cooked soul food. I say, uh, I don't eat kale and spinach. I, I need some fried chicken, them collard greens you got, uh, them yams you got, that macaroni and cheese. That's what I. That's what I eat. <laughs> I, I'm a relationship coach. I'm a life coach, but I'm not a health and wellness coach. Okay, all that salmon that y'all eating with asparagus. Mm. I, I can eat it now. I eat it every now and then. I cook it on the grill for my family and I eat it, but that's not what I'm finna eat every day. You see what I'm saying? What I'm telling you is, is everybody is human. And ain't nobody better than you. And this is the thing. Stop taking pride in the little bit of knowledge that you went and got. We go and read one book and all of a sudden we just a nutritionist. Oh, you should not eat that. You should not eat that. You should not drink that. You should not do that. You should not. Listen. Listen, hush. Because that's somebody else's research that you read. Okay, how do that make your body feel? What do it do for your body? You feel good? Great. All right, you ain't got the same DNA as somebody else. I talked to one chef. He's a, a, a blood type diet. He told me, being blood type O, he said, you need red meat. He said, you got the only blood type that could properly break down and process red meat. My wife told him, her, her blood type, he said, you, your blood type like fish, like light foods, fish and, and salads, you know, vegetables. That's exactly how my wife eat. We didn't even know this. I used to be craving me a steak. And she really wasn't a steak person. She liked fish and vegetables. When we talked to this guy, we was at dinner, and he told us about blood type diets, and we shared our blood type, and he told us how our blood type need to eat. That's exactly how we eat. But that was a natural craving. You see what I'm saying? This God ordained. This what God set in place. God set stuff in place that it's going to baffle the human mind. So then you have somebody who what worked for them, they become a coach, a life coach, a, a, a nutritionist or somebody, and they say, hey, do this right here. And they give somebody a plan, and the person pass out and die. If somebody give me a plan that my body could, could withstand, I get that same plan to my wife. She lightheaded about the wreck, about to, about to pass out. And so we learned that. And when she was doing bodybuilding, the 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 bodybuilders, the coaches, didn't know what they was talking about. Put everybody on this plan. One of her friends caught a a situation, or like a type of disease, like a reaction to that meal plan that they had and the workout plan that they had. And the friend went on this thing to where it ruined her body, to where she went from the fittest person you ever seen to her body would not stop gaining weight. No matter how much she worked out, what she did, it, she would not stop gaining weight. That right there showed me ain't nothing one size fit all. Ain't nothing 
for ain't no one prescription for every ailment. Ain't no one prescription for everybody other than Dr. Jesus. And so I'm here to tell you, and this was random. I this was this video was finna be five minutes. I said, oh, let me shoot a quick 10-minute video on this right here since I'm working from the bed and I want to just be authentic with people and just let them know, like, listen, you ain't got to be up, you know, everybody don't get up, everybody who who is successful, quote unquote, however you decide, define success, but everybody that you see as successful ain't getting up running three miles, five o'clock in the morning. Everybody not get there choking on vegetables all day. Everybody not drinking a gallon of water every day. Everybody not reading 50 books a year. Like a lot of this stuff that you hear is just to sound good. And 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 people who understand the power of the tongue, you understand that what you brag about is where you the weakest at. So the people who understand, so the people, a lot of, is where you're going to be tested at the most. Where you're going to be tested at the most. If you bragging about something prideful, it's different if you sharing something and it's a testimony than when you bragging about something prideful. See, the people who show you the most, who show money the most got the worst financial situation. The people who really, really, really got money, you'd never see them flash cash online. You'd never see them show it. People who really got it, who really doing it, you really don't get it. It really don't get showed because it don't move them. It don't move. It's not nothing. In it. It's not new to them. It's not surprising to them. The people who design their success and they made a plan and they work toward it, they're not surprised by success. They expected it. And so you're going to understand that as you go. You'll understand that as you go. You ain't going to understand everything right now because sometimes you don't understand things till you get to a certain place in life because we all see from where we are. And we all speak from where we at. So a lot of times, if I'm in a different place in life, where I'm speaking from, it ain't going to speak to you. So you can't say, oh, Tony don't wake up at 5 a.m., so I ain't going to wake up. No, you might need to wake up at 5 a.m. Because your skill set and your gifting may be different than mine. Your brain makeup may be different than mine. You may need to wake up at 5 a.m. You may need to walk a mile a day. Because your body is different than mine. Your metabolism is different than mine. So my metabolism is different to where I could eat differently than my wife and I don't gain weight or my weight don't show the same as it would show on her if she had the same diet as me and the same habits as me. Because we built different. Our body's not the same. Our genetics are not the same. So you can't look at what worked for somebody else. You And your heart is always pulling you toward your work ethic, your habits, what you need. Your heart is always pulling you toward it. Your your mind is guiding you in that direction. But a lot of times you'll say, well, let me do this because such and such does this. And that may not work for you. So understand, like, social media ain't, ain't for everybody. YouTube ain't for everybody. Instagram ain't for everybody. You know, I don't have a TikTok that's not for me. Everybody say, oh, you ought to get on TikTok. You ought to get on TikTok and share your message on TikTok. That's not my personality. That's not me to be. That's not me. I, 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 I'm, I'm just, mm -mm, I just, that's not me. To me, that is lame. Not, I don't mean lame and disrespectful, but I'm just saying lame like two left shoes. Wearing two left shoes. That's how TikTok is to me. I don't. I have a Snapchat. I don't use Snapchat. That I just. That's not me. I got a LinkedIn. I don't go on there. It's too stuffy for me. That's too big. That's for corporate people. I work for myself. I'm my own boss. Yes, it's entrepreneurs on there, but it's still. It's too salesy. It's too. Every DM I get on there, somebody selling me something. Somebody asking me, you know, to sell me something. Trying to sell. That's all it is. It's just like. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Ain't no real connection on LinkedIn. It's just everybody business-minded, everybody money-hungry, everybody success fiending. That's what that site is built for, business. That's what your focus is. That's not me. I'm a little bit more free-flowing, you know, with my life. I ain't all that uptight and stuffy like, like LinkedIn. You know, YouTube, that's me. Facebook, I built my Facebook because my partner told me to build a Facebook. I did it. It's at... 
over a mid 1.7 million um followers on my Facebook page, but I really don't post on it like that because it's too it's too argumentative. People too in their feelings. Everybody use Facebook like they journal. That's too much for me. I don't I don't I really don't don't write no journal on my page about about how you feel about what I just posted. This is my page. And you're gonna get told about yourself. So I I stay off of Facebook like that. Same with Instagram. It go out to too many random people and everybody got an opinion. You know, I'm not open to all opinion every opinion. I share on my page for people who could benefit from what I'm sharing, but I'm not on my page to argue with you. I'm not on my page to debate with you. You disagree? Okay, that's fine with me. Share that on your page. I'm not on my page to debate with you because I ain't trying to prove nothing to you and, and you can't prove nothing to me. You see what I'm saying? So you have to know. I know my personality. I know my style. I know what worked for me. I tried to do the 5 a.m. thing a little bit. Mm-mm. Broke me down. New Surrey Bob. Did not work. Uh-uh. Felt good for a couple of days, but phew, that third, fourth day, uh, middle of Middle of the day, I said, no, this ain't how I'm built. This ain't, I'm a sleeper. I'm a rester. I'm a relaxer. But my personality is very calm and chill on a day-to-day. -day. I'm not really the loudest in the room. I'm not the life of the party. So that go hand-in-hand -hand with me being a relaxer and me being a sleeper, you know. And that's how my oldest son is. He a sleeper. You know, he, on his on a Saturday, if he ain't got no game, that boy, he'll, he'll sleep to noon. You know, he'll wake up in the morning, he go back to sleep. He love to sleep. But then every other day for school, he getting up 6 a.m. And he be on it. He do what he got to do. But when he get the rest, he sleep. My youngest son, he don't know what sleeping in is. As soon as that little light crack through that blind, he up. He finna be up. If that's 6 a.m., he, he with it. 7 a.m., 8 a.m., he with it. The longest he probably slept in his life is one or two times to like 9, 10 a.m. One or two times, but that's just after being completely tired and drained. But I say that to say, everybody is different. Everybody's road to success is different. And so a lot of times you look at these people and they say, hey, you got to grind. You got to work. And I got some grind quotes too. It just, some of it just sound good. You can't just, you can't base your life off of a quote. Can't base your life off of a quote. So much just sound good. So I got some grind quotes too. But a lot of people, they talk about grinding, grinding, grinding. But what you don't realize, some of them is former drug addicts. So a person who was a former drug addict, they got to grind like there is no tomorrow to keep their mind busy because an idle mind going to send them back to that cocaine. Going to send them back, you know, to what they were dealing with. And so... You might not have an addictive personality. You might not have ever struggled with drugs. So that grind right there, you try to copy their grind, you about to lose your mind. You know, you snapping on people. You cut off your whole family. You going crazy because you trying to be a workaholic like this person you follow online. And I'm telling you, that ain't wisdom. So look, you take bits and pieces from different people you come across. You take bits and pieces and you apply it to your life and you see what works and what doesn't work. And I was listening to a book last night and it was talking about, uh, I think it was the book called Peak. And um, I've listened to it. And at the end, and every time I'm listening to it, I'm, I'm taking it, everything I'm listening to like gospel. And then at the end of it, I, had, I, said, I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, hold on, Tony, hold on, hold on now. Hold on now, Tony. Okay, this a book. Okay, this an author. Okay, their book made it to this app. But do you know this person? No, I don't know this person. Do you know if this a man or a woman? No, I don't know if a man or a woman wrote this book. Okay, do you know if this person was a drug addict? No, I don't know that. Do you know if this person believe in God? No, I don't know that. Okay, do you know anything about this person? No, I don't know. Is this person God? No, this person is not God. See, I had to take myself and walk myself through that and re and remember like, oh, hold on now. Let me see what, you, what about this right here makes sense. Let me see what in this agree with my principles. 
my life principles, my belief system. Let me see what in here could enhance my life, could make my life better. And what in here comes from where this person was at in their life when they wrote the book. You see what I mean? And so, and one of the things the book said is it tried to dispute the 10,000 hour rule by Malcolm Gladwell. And it was basically saying 10,000 hours of work at something is not necessarily true. And that's a lie because, but see the person, what it was is, it's come from a place of jealousy. When you see somebody that's big and they got a voice and they done made this concept that done become world renowned, if you look at them and you upset that they in that position and you not in that position, then you want to argue and debate their lessons because you wish that was you. Guess what? I recognize that because I done, I done did that. Listen, if you do ten, if you put ten thousand hours of work in at anything, you an expert. Point blank, period. I don't care what it is. You, you sold for ten thousand dollars, ten thousand hours. You a sower. You play basketball for ten thousand hours. You a bas You a hooper. You hear me? You sang for ten thousand hours. That voice finna get right. I saw this with my own eyes because I was going to church, and the pastor wife started a group with her daughter and two two other young ladies. They got up there to sing on the first Sunday that she put them together, the group. Destiny Child, they look like fate stepdaughter. Fate's stepdaughter, not Destiny Child. When I tell you it sounded like somebody was drowning cats, and I was young, I was like... <coughs> oh, it was terrible. When I tell you, them young lady were going to practice and practicing with her all week long. When I tell you, probably by a year later, they sounded like Destiny Child. I was like, wow. And the pastor daughter was the lead girl in the group. I started looking at her like Beyonce. I started looking at her like, man, she kind of favoring Beyonce a little bit. Man, she sounded like Beyonce sounded saying that Amazing Grace. It was them hours of practice. So when I heard, when I listened to this book last night, it's on an app. And I'll share this with you. It's an app called Headway. And I ain't got no referral code or nothing. I need to have one now. So, but it's like $89 a year. You get a seven-day free trial. And so you can listen to all these books. So I'm going to listen to these books. I'm going to listen to the books because it adds knowledge. You just get your mind. Now, what I notice is when I'm listening to this stuff, I start having ideas of my own. I miss half of what they say because it get my brain to churning. I hear one sentence. That's why I tell y'all to watch my videos more than once because you hear one sentence and you go off on a tangent in your mind thinking about your life. And so my idea started coming back to me, my, my, my business idea that the Lord keep putting on my, on my heart. So I text my wife. She was sleeping. I text her and I said, hey, baby, I'm up late. I'm still, I'm studying. And, and this idea that hit me again, I think it's about time I activate it. So I'm going to have to talk to her about that. And uh, But I say that to say, this video literally was supposed to be five minutes. Y'all see what I'm telling you? Y'all see what I'm telling you? But see, listen, I did not get on here with this much to say. But that's how I know that God called me to do what I'm doing. And, and I'm speaking from the spirit, what the spirit gave me. And this what I this what I, I realized. 2021, I'm going to stop faking. And I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I'm going to stop hiding stuff. And you could take it for, for, for what you take it. You could disagree with it, disagree with it, but I'm going to share with you the truth that I'm living and what I feel is placed on my heart to go out into the world and level the playing field. Because just like my client said, Tony, I'm so glad you said that you don't like routine because she said, I'm like that too. And I thought something was wrong with me, like I'm not no real leader or something. And, and I said, man, had I not said that, she wouldn't have... Realize that, yes, it's somebody that is successful and has built a brand that does not like routine, like doing the same thing over and over. That's why with the gym, I go for a week, I take a week off. I go for two weeks, I take a week off or two weeks off because I don't like routine. I'm not a creature of habit. I like spontaneity. 
I like to do different things. I don't like to feel like no rat in a maze. I don't like to feel like no hamster on a wheel. I don't like to feel like no prisoner in prison, no soldier in the army. I like to feel like I am free, like I'm living life freedom and I'm doing what's realistic, what's for me, what what is going to enhance me in that moment. So a lot of times, so somebody, somebody said, okay, Tony, I see you slimming down and um, I see you slimming down and you, somebody commented that, I see you slimming down. I'm not slimming down. I actually gain weight. But from me not going to the gym for a couple weeks, it allowed my muscles to settle. So when you saw saw me in my shirt, that striped shirt I had on yesterday, and you could see a little chest, you could see a little arm, it just allowed my muscles to settle. And then that's a different shirt. It's like a silky kind of fitting shirt. It's not cotton, so it sit down on me. You normally see me in a T-shirt. And so it just showed up differently. And somebody made that comment, but I ain't did nothing different. It just me taking that break from the gym, the swelling went down. Because, you know, you're doing all that lifting, bite to bite to bite to bite. Your muscles swell up. And unless you take the time to just kind of relax sometimes, let your muscle, let that swelling go down, let everything settle, then you don't really get to even see. And then when you're working out, you actually gaining weight when you're building muscle. So I went in the gym, 200 pounds, now I'm 210. And then after things settle, I'll be 207 and 205, and then I'll get back, you know, so that building muscle and eating, it put weight on me, but it didn't look like I was gaining weight. So somebody said, I see you slimming down. No, I actually gain weight. You see what I'm saying? So I say that to say that a lot of stuff is smoke and mirrors. When you look out here at other people's life, and you look out here, you see people on Instagram, and you see people out here doing stuff. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, it's people that you'll look at and you think, oh, man, I know they always got 100K in the bank. I know they got a million in the bank. But because I done been in that position where people looked at me like that and my bank account looked like an upside-down smile and I, I go in there, the bank account and the, the account cussing me out, because of that... I know. I remember I remember when I was just over broke, somebody said, uh, oh, why you saying, why you writing a quote about struggle? You know you a millionaire. I would and but the person looked at my brand and the person Googled me and it said Tony Gassy net worth or something. And they looked up that what them people said. I wasn't nowhere near. I wasn't nowhere near no millionaire when the person said that. But I said, well, look at how stuff look. Look at perception. That's how. I remember times in my entrepreneurship journey that people who work, you know, dead-end jobs, people who work dead-end jobs had more money than me. And it looked like I was on top of the world, but it was entrepreneurship. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. You know, it just, it, it, it fluctuates. But people working a job are getting the same check every two weeks. So they stacking up. Whereas as an entrepreneur, you can have an amazing month, then you can have a bad month. So that person that got that check every two weeks, they end up having more money than the millionaire entrepreneur online. And and that entrepreneur got to keep selling. You see these people that, that you'll see them make a million dollars in 30 minutes, you'll make a million dollars. That might be the only million they make that year. But then but you don't know if they're gonna make that five years from now. Because they may hit a point to where all their customers done had their product. Every everybody they could reach then bought their product. And then so what's not what's new? That that's the max that they reach. And then them people go and try other people's products. Cause people ain't got no loyalty. So you'll look at this person and you'll get jealous of their life because they show you a screenshot of their money. But you don't know what next month going to look like and you don't know what next year going to look like. So that's why you got to pay attention to your life. That's why you got to go to God for your plan. That's why you got to do what makes sense for you. You can hear from other people. You can learn from other people. But don't just try to copy somebody else's blueprint down to the letter because 
Their life is not your life. Their past is not your past. Their future is not your future. So you got to pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and use discretion to do what's right for you, to do what fits you and what works for you, not what worked for me or the next person because it ain't one size fits all. Hey, God bless. I ain't going to go over an hour. We'll talk.